If you're thinking about making a van into a camper van for weekend getaways or adventures, or you're thinking about living in a van, check this video out where I compare the different kinds. Howdy YouTube. So my search has been underway for a while now for a type of van that I'm going to live in and save a lot of money by not having to pay rent or do anything like that. I've looked at all different types of vans and I'm going to explain a few of them to you here that most interest me. Now we're going to start with a van that a lot of people like to use and this is the first kind I was thinking about. This is the Sprinter van that is made by Mercedes and has been badged under Dodge, Freightliner, people like that. And these are those really tall vans you see. It is available with a diesel engine that gets really good gas mileage, like up over 20 miles per gallon. So the main advantages with this van are you can stand up in it if you're a tall person, like up to six foot four, and they get the good gas mileage with the diesel engine and they last a while. The downsides are these vans tend to be expensive. The T1N is the most popular one, and those go for twelve to fifteen thousand dollars depending on you know the quality and miles and all that so they're pretty pricey the other disadvantage is with that tall height you're going to be a little bit more of a target for parking enforcement and things like that there's a lot of parking laws especially in california that won't let you park in certain places if your vehicle is over seven feet tall and this is definitely over seven feet tall so that's a consideration the other disadvantage with these is they can't take the abuse like American vans can. I'm not suggesting people don't maintain their vans or treat them very rough, but these will not stand up to quite as much as American vans from what I've been reading. The next kind of van we're going to talk about real quick are conversion vans. And I'm not really considering these that seriously for the simple reason that they're not as stealthy. These vans tend to have blinds in the windows because they've got windows all the way around. You can pretty much tell somebody's camping in these. And they are available in high top versions as well. Uh, if you're going to be boondocking or camping in campsites, this could be a good option. But for me, I plan to be stealth camping in the city. So this isn't the best for me. The clear advantage is if you are looking at those other options where you don't have to worry about stealth, you've got all kinds of water connections and kitchens built into these things and you know sometimes even bathrooms and showers the next kind of van is the van I am going to get and this is just a standard cargo van the kind I'm looking at is a Chevy Express 2500 with a V8 engine I wouldn't mind having a diesel but they cost a lot more uh, you will get some money back at resale but for the amount of miles that I plan to put on the van I'm just not going to get the money back out of a diesel so the pluses of the cargo van are definitely the stealth. The minuses are I'm not going to be able to stand up in it and it won't have as much ventilation as a van with a lot of windows that I could open. But stealth is the main factor I'm considering so I don't have to pay to sleep places. You may be wondering why I want the Chevy Express instead of the Ford Econoline van. There's actually a couple reasons. One of them is while I read that the Ford does have a little bit more room up front, more leg room and possibly even a little more headroom. The Chevy has about an inch extra width through the van and has at least about three extra inches in length in the cargo area. That's in the standard wheelbase. The Chevy also has a much tighter turning radius. It can turn around in a much smaller area than the Ford can. And the Chevy definitely has more horsepower. The other thing is I've been looking for a couple weeks now for the Chevy that I described to you here and I can't find one yet. When I contact the dealerships they tell me, oh I've got a Ford with a sliding door, I've got a 250 Econo line just like you're looking for but I don't want the Ford and these guys tell me they get the Chevys in and they just can't keep them on the floor. So apparently the Chevys are selling a lot more at least in the used market. They do cost a little more new so Apparently they have a little higher resale value too. But for the simple reason of more room in the cargo area, the extra horsepower, the tighter turning radius so it's easier to get around in, the Chevy's a clear choice. There's one van that I do think is very cool that I'm not even considering, and that's the VW Westfalia. 
this is what I would have if I had a bunch of money and wasn't worried about stealth camping. I hear that in the Pacific Northwest you can get away with driving these because there's so many around. Plus they're more lax in general about people sleeping in vehicles up there from what I understand. So you can kind of get away with them in that area. But I want to travel through a lot more of the U.S. than just that little corner up there. And to me when you see a Westphalia it's just obvious that somebody's camping in it. The other concerns are these vehicles are pretty expensive to get one that's going to be reliable and even if you get one that's going to be reliable in general people spend quite a bit of money to maintain these either that or they spend a lot of time tinkering with them themselves and I just don't want to have that headache or expense I just want to have a vehicle that I can get around in reliably and stealthily so although I love VWs and I actually drive a VW my car I'm not considering the Westphalia now the one last kind of van I will talk about is a van that's brand new to the market and I'm very excited about but I can't afford right now because it is new and this is the Dodge Promaster this is new in 2014 they cost thirty to forty thousand dollars if I was gonna spring that kind of money I would opt for the diesel engine which would get much better mileage these vans are wider and this is the main thing that attracts me is they are wider than cargo vans by about an inch and a half so I probably would be able to put my bed across these and have a lot more room inside the van. They're also available in high top. The consideration with these is they're already over seven feet without the high top option because they are taller in the short model than a cargo van is. So cargo vans, you know, going by that seven foot law in California or other places for parking or going by being able to fit in parking garages Parking garages have to be eight feet at the entrance, but once you're inside, the pipes and overhead things and things like that only have to be seven feet tall. So the ProMaster will not be able to get into those, even in the short model. So with that van, I would just say to heck with it and get the tall model and be able to stand up in it. You're also not going to have to be able to go into drive throughs with things like that, but I'm not worried about those. The main consideration for me is parking laws and parking garages if you ever need to park in one of those. So those are the kinds of vans guys. I hope that helps you make a decision with the kind of van you want to get and you have fun on the road. Please subscribe to my channel if you like this kind of content because I'm going to be going through the whole process from you know I've been thinking about the van to buying the van to customizing the van for living in to being out there living in it. You'll be able to see my whole journey.